All right, so now I've blended together three layers, but really only two sources, right? I took the sky from this layer, put this mountain on top of it, and used a soft-edged eraser at 100% to start with to get rid of that hard edge. Otherwise, you would end up with a ghosted hard edge, which is really obvious. And then on top of that, I used the mountain from that same reference, and that's called internal compositing, and put that over the top of that mountain. Next, I have this kind of middle ground um, mountain and reflecting pool. So I'm going to use my move tool. See how I can place that in. Control T. I'll shrink my tools a little bit so I have more space. I want to make sure I can see the reflecting pool just a little bit right there. And I don't love the tangency that that's creating. I'll switch to my other mic. So I'm just going to nudge it a little bit, and I can always cut out a new mountain range here as well, and internally composite that. So I'm going to hit return or enter, and max is the return key. And now I can just cut out what I think I can use, right, which is this chunk. Oh, I'm still on the magnetic lasso. That's a pain. Yeah, the magnetic lasso, it doesn't work too well in the browser-based program just because it takes more processing. And I'm having trouble even getting it to select. There we go. Okay, so regular lasso. Come on. Really confused photo pina. All right, let's abort. Okay, there we go. So, with my regular lasso, I just select around what I think I can use, a rough selection. Hit Command-J to duplicate it, erase the smart layer where it comes from, though I can always bring that back in if I need to for my references. Turn off my guideline and then decide, well, what do I need to composite with? All right. And I definitely don't need this sky. I've already got plenty of sky. So I'm going to use the magic wand, contiguous 32 tolerance. And I'm on the wrong layer. Deselect. Command D is your shortcut for deselecting. Hold down Shift, and I can add to the magic wand. Because remember, with contiguous, it's only pixels that are touching. So everywhere I click with the point of my arrow, it's choosing one distinct pixel and then other pixels that are touching that pixel within a tolerance of 32. 
and then I hit delete. And I'll see that there's little debris that's left, you know, in the sky like that. So I can just use my regular lasso, loop into that. Then there might be other little bits that I can cut out with my regular lasso. And I don't, I still don't love that tangency. So let's do control T. See how that mountain is lining up with the other mountain. And that's why I have the guideline there. I don't want to push it so far that I don't have it going all the way. So I have it right at the edge right now. About there is good. And then I might decide, you know, I want to make my own mountain range out of this. It more fits the intentions of my sketch. Kind of cut it down. It's the beauty of organic source ma source material. Yeah, and that's working for now. Now the colors do not work at all yet. And we're going to adjust color and lighting later. But for now, this is kind of rough placing everything together. And you decide what you like and what you don't like from your different references. Okay, now, good time to save it. Now I'm gonna start bringing in some of the middle ground elements. Right? And I'm gonna bring them in behind my sketch but on top of everything else. And number one, the big smooth mountain, nice big reference. Remember I flipped it so that the lighting matched a little bit better. And I want to get some of the color variation that's already in the, the reference, if possible. So I might even use, because the reference is big enough, I might even use this smaller part of the mountain or of the mound, like that. Okay, now I'm going to rough cut out what I think I can use, leaving plenty of overlap. like so, and then I hit Command-J, duplicate it, and then turn off the smart object that it came from. And now I'm just going to do another rough cut, cutting past this shadow. And it's the top of the, the mound, and erasing all that. Whoops, wrong layer. <laughs> if you're a really careful compositing artist, you can lock your layers as you go, as you finish something. So I could lock all three of these, all four of these layers that make up my background. So I'm not accidentally selecting them and erasing from them. Once you have a selection, you can also use your arrow keys to kind of nudge it up or down as well. Okay, so I've got that in there. 
I'm not thrilled with this edge. So let me show you a nice technique. Turn off the background layers just so you can see it clearly. So this edge is kind of dark and bumpy because it was just with my lasso. So what I can do to smooth it is I can select the empty space with the magic wand on that layer. And, and I think I showed you this before. Whoops. Select the empty space with the magic wand. And then I'm going to change to my lasso tool and I'm going to put feather on and I'm going to feather it about five pixels. And then I'm going to hold down shift and where I see those bumps, come on. With my lasso, I'm going to add to it. And then hit delete. And you don't even need to use the magic wand. So what I can do is with the lasso, I can put feather, or with the magic wand, I can set it with a feather of five to begin with, then set it, and then just hit delete. And it should soften it, but it doesn't seem to. Let's see. So if I use a five pixel feather with the lasso though, it will automatically smooth that lasso selection. Five is maybe a little strong. Let's try a two pixel feather. So as I work across it, then when I deselect, you see it, it cuts it away a little bit more softly, which is helpful for this shadow. So I'm kind of making my own edge of a mountain here. So a way of softening your selections is to use feather. So they're not so ragged. And because it's feathering two pixels, it's just softly gradating it. The more you hit delete, the more it will soften it and take away. So you can hit delete multiple times until you get to the place where you want. And you see how those guides are really helpful. Because I don't really need to work beyond what the edges of my image are. And then I don't mind it so much at the top here. little bit of sharp detail gives authenticity. So I'm going to dip in and out of it just a little bit. Okay. So now I've got that in there. What's next? Let's do the uh, the extreme foreground rock and ground number two so its native pixel resolution is just about right if anything it's a little small and so it's okay to have to enlarge a little bit from how it comes in. But the more you do that, the more the computer is having to invent pixels. So that can get problematic. But I just want the rock and the shadow from this element. So I'm gonna do a rough cut of it. It'd be like if I just wanted a tree. Get plenty of overlap. Hit Command J. And now how do I cut this out? Well, magic wand isn't going to work all that great because